Hello. Today, I'm going to show you how to create a display for reoccurring tasks in a little bit of a different way than I've explained in the past. So this is going to be based off of the day of the week. So for instance, if you have class every Monday or you have a reoccurring task that happens every single Friday or Wednesday, you don't want to go ahead and put that task over and over and over again inside of something like a calendar view. So instead, I want to create this display on the top of something like a planning page that will just display whenever it is the day of the week, like right now when I'm filming this, it is Sunday. I only want tasks that are reoccurring on Sundays to appear. So I don't have to go into my tasks database and constantly put those tasks in. I just want to be reminded at the top of the page. So that's what we're going to do, but I want to take it a step further. Instead of just doing weekly reoccurring tasks based off the day of the week, I want to do something like if you have to do something every other week, like every other Wednesday or every other Saturday. As well, we're going to work with monthly tasks. So let's get into it. So let's start with this little table I made earlier in the week that is essentially just planning for the expansion of my content creation. I want to kind of expand beyond Notion. So for each thing I have to do, it correlates with a weekday. So I want to put out some Anki content every Monday and Thursday. Some Excel content pretty much every day of the week since I already have a backlog of that content. I'm just going to roll it out. Remnote, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and so on and so forth. So I want this to display to me at the top of my planning page. So I'm going to show you an example of it already completely finished. If I go to this example, you'll see my to-do list is right here with my calendar view. And then below it, I have a little timetable. And if you want to know more about this, I do have a video on it. But here at the top is where I want to put in my reoccurring tasks. So today it looks like I should be doing these four things considering it's Sunday. Now let's get into how this is made. So really all we're going to try to find out is when we are going to check this to-do box. So now we have our days in here. Let's figure out simply, let's just delete this. If today is a certain day of the week, Monday through Sunday, and my task happens to land on that day, I want the box to be ticked. So to do this, we're going to first say contains. So this contains function is going to show us in a tag property if a certain tag is contained within that property. To say what property it is, we go prop. And down here, it'll show you all the properties. So you can actually just say prop and then click the property you want to see. So day. So contains in prop day, comma, what do we want it to contain? Well, we want it to contain today. So to do that, we're going to go format date, format date that is now. And we're going to go lowercase d four times to show us the day of the week. And we're going to close it out. So Rome Sunday is clicked. Today is Sunday when I'm filming. Sunday's clicked here, Sunday's clicked here, and Sunday's clicked here. So if this is all you need, then you're good to go. You really only need this formula. But let's say that there's some repeated tasks that aren't weekly. There are actually some that are every other week, like I mentioned before. For that, we're going to add two different properties. We're going to add repeat and last published. Now in repeat, I have weekly and EO week. That displays every other week. And then in last published is exactly what it says. Whenever we last published this piece of content or whenever we last did this particular task. It looks like I have no Sundays on every other week. So let's just quickly put that in there somewhere. Let's put a Sunday in here. So here's what we're going to do to add in that every other week element. We're going to put prop. So property repeat over here. If it equals weekly and 
and contains today's weekday, we want it to be checked. However, if it is every other week, so or property repeat equals EO week and contains property day again let's just copy paste this format date now those four lowercase d's we also want another instance so not only does the weekday land on today but i also want the date between now so the date between now and last published in a number of days to be greater than seven so let's look at this and then we'll go over that formula. It looks like this is now unticked, which is great. But let's say we last published this on the 12th. Now it is clicked. The 5th, the 28th, doesn't matter. As long as it is before the 19th, we have to repeat this task. So if I maybe last published it, maybe I was a little bit late, I didn't publish it on that Sunday, but I did publish it maybe on Wednesday. It doesn't matter. I still have to do it on Sunday on the 26th. Let's go back into that formula. So the reason we're saying or here between these two pieces of formula, if we said and, I'll show you what happens. Everything sort of cancels each other out. We want to say or. There's two different instances that may happen simultaneously. We want both of them, both weekly tasks and every other week tasks to also be clicked under these conditions. Now let's look at monthly tasks. So I have one monthly task in here and it is my Notion essay. It looks like it's every Tuesday, but for this example, let's actually take this Sunday away and put Sunday up at essay to test it. And let's say the last time we published this was the fifth. Okay, so in this instance, if it is the 5th, the next time I want to publish this is August 5th or somewhere around there. So let's create another instance up here at the start of the formula that goes prop repeat equals monthly and contains prop day again format date now close that out and four lowercase d's now like below here for every other week portion of the formula for monthly i want it to be greater than 29 days and i'll show you why i'm doing it in days and not by one month so let's just copy this, since we already have it here, plug it in, and let's separate before we do anything. See, this is one piece of formula that's for our month, and this is for our week and every other week, so let's put in OR to separate everything. And instead of saying greater than seven days, let's say 29. So now let's go over here and see that course this is now unticked because we are not greater than 29 days away from July 5th but if I were to go in to June 26th it would be clicked 27th it wouldn't 25th it would and all through June it would be clicked let's go back to the fifth now I want to show you why you can't do one month that's because if I were to do that and just say greater than one, and let's again go to the 26th of June, it will be unticked. In fact, it will be unticked entirely until we get to May 26th. So greater than one month means two months, not anywhere between one and two months. So that's the difference. If I were to go back to the 26th and put in days 29, 
it will be good. So again, this is our bit of formula for our month. And then we have our weekly formula section and our every other week formula section. Now let's assume we have published this article ahead of schedule. So for instance, let's look at this Rome article. Say we published it on the 19th for last week, but we also were a few days early for the 26th upload. And we were a little bit ahead of schedule. Say we published on the 24th. Well, it'll still say that we need to do it on the 26th when that really isn't the case. To get around this, I decided to create this little column here for ahead of schedule. So if you are ahead of schedule and the last published is 24th, you're just gonna click this here and we want this to now be unchecked because we've already done it for the week. In fact, the only maintenance you need on this little reference table is to get rid of all these ahead checks if they are there at the end of the week so that it clears out. And of course, your complete checklist is actually just going to be plugging in the date that you completed the task in this last published or whatever you wanna call it. So let's make sure this is unticked when a head is clicked. So we're gonna go in here and just do a small snippet of formula right at the beginning again. And we're gonna go prop ahead. By just putting prop ahead in a checkbox column, what I am telling this is if prop ahead is checked. If I wanted to ask my database if it was empty, I would add empty to the beginning here and close it out. But I'm not asking it that, I'm asking it if it is ticked, then I want it to say false. I'm gonna put this colon in there for any instance that is true. So all of these instances are true. This is when we wanna click the box and this is the only time we don't wanna click the box. And that is pretty much how we're gonna do that. Now this is something called an if statement. So if this, then false. Colon represents if not, or a false condition, then all of this. So now you can see it is unchecked. If I were to uncheck it, it would still be checked to do on the 26th. This would then assume that this 24th upload or publish date is actually just me being late on this 19th date. But if I click ahead, it means I'm ahead of schedule. As well, like I said before, if you don't click ahead of schedule, it doesn't matter at what point you click on this calendar. You don't have to be on time. You don't have to publish on that day, just as long as it's before the following weekday. Okay, so now let's solve another problem. Let's say you just created this database and you don't have any last published dates here. You just started. So any date that is clear, we haven't published anything yet. If this is empty, we'll just check it. I know there might be some issues with this, especially in terms of every other week repeats. We don't want to start every single one of those on the first week. You might want to break them up to start, but I think this is just the best compromise in general. So that, that is a limitation. So if prop ahead is clicked false, this is the only instance where we want false. In this instance of being empty, we do want it to be true. So it's gonna be on this side of the colon. And we're just gonna go, like I said before, empty, last published. So if this is empty and contains, and we're just gonna copy and paste, this is again, contains today's day of the week in day property. And right here, we're gonna put in since this, is, since this is the end of the formula, or. So we're saying that if last published is empty and contains today's day of the week in the day property, we are going to tick it true. As well, for monthly, weekly, and every other week. Now down here it tells us parentheses is expected We'll just add that at the end. And let's pretend this is Sunday, just for an example. And it will be ticked because last published is empty. Now let's say this is every other week. 
and it was published last Sunday, it would be false. If for weekly and it was published last Sunday, it would be true. And if it were clear, it would also be true. If it were ahead of schedule, false. Kind of get what's going on. Hopefully. So now let's solve one last problem. And let's say if it's published today, I want this to do box to be empty because we've already done it. So for instance, here, if I published it on the 26th today, it still says I need to do it. I don't want that. I want it to be unticked. So let's add the last element of this formula. So this element is going to be a false result. So again, everything on this side of the colon is true. Let's add something to the false side. Let's say if contains format date prop last published month day year format. So if contained within prop last published in this format, if in this property contains the exact day that is today, so to find that we'll go format date now in the same format of three M's, which equals the month, two D's of the date in two numbers, which is how this is formatted here. You can see three characters for the month, two for the day, and four for the year. So let's just put that in here. So if it matches up with today, now. So if property last published contains today or a head property is unchecked, it will be false. Otherwise, everything else will be true. So it looks like because last published is on today, we are unchecked. Or on the 19th, we'd still be checked. So I hope you kind of understand what's going on here. So let's look at some other ways to view this. So we can also view it by day of the week. So I have that in board view here, Monday through Sunday, and it just shows me everything I need to do on each day in this format, which is nice. We also have published today, which is everything that is filtered for today. Now this is how I filtered it. First of all, it's in list view and the filter is to do is checked. Now this is the view I'm going to put at the top of my planner page. So let's go up to the copy of that page. And that's what I have here. Now let's just delete this real quick and I'll show you how to do this from scratch. So I'm gonna go forward slash link, create linked database. I'm gonna search for that table, content distribution. It's gonna come out all wacky like this, but we'll clean it up by going to list, deleting this table view and adding that filter I just showed you before. Add filter, to do is checked. So up here I have generally what I need to do today in reoccurring tasks, my to-do list that is more detailed, and then my timetable down here. I really hope that I got this across clearly, especially if you're not really familiar with formulas. I am going to leave a link down below to this template so you can take a look around and test things out. You will have to duplicate the page first to test out these dates. And as well, if I got anything wrong, please let me know or if there's any other way you would go about doing this. I'm totally open to that. This isn't the end all be all. There's many of ways to work in Notion, especially with formulas that sometimes create the same exact result. And with that, I will see you guys next time.